To talk more about the Pope's visit to the United States, we're joined by Sister Simone Campbell. She's executive director of Network, a Catholic social justice organization. She attended the Pope's speech before Congress and at the White House. She's the author of A Nun on the Bus, How All of Us Can Create Hope, Change and Community. We'll also be joined by Kumi Naidu, executive director of Greenpeace International, as well as Robert Ellsberg, editor and publisher of Orbis Books, the American imprint of the Mary Knoll Order. He edited and published selected writings by Dorothy Day, as well as her diaries and letters, and has published books on Thomas Merton. Uh, the Pope spoke both about Thomas Merton and Dorothy Day in his congressional address. Sister Campbell, welcome to Democracy Now! Let's begin with you. Just start off by talking about what the day was like yesterday. Where were you seated? What was it like in this first-ever address before Congress by a pope? Well, I had the deep honor of being in the front row of the gallery uh, on the Republican side. As you face the Pope, it was on the right side. And we got seated in some kind of seniority way by who gave us our tickets. And so, since I had Senator Barbara Boxer's ticket, I, I had a front row seat. It was um, a lot of expectation. But one of the things that I really noticed was, of course, we got there early, we had to be seated early, go through security, find our way. But what I noticed was the eagerness of all of the participants to be community in our little area. And it ended up that I was seated uh, um, almost exactly next to uh, Cindy McCain, Senator McCain's wife. And we had a lovely conversation about uh, Senator McCain's efforts on uh, immigration reform. We talked policy, but mostly we talked about what joy and hope Pope Francis was bringing, that we could bridge, maybe bridge, some of these huge divides in our country and be realistic about the needs that we're facing. He brings a candor that I think was contagious. Well, uh, Sister Simone, uh, the to, I was struck by his very strong words on the arms trade, which to me seemed oh. to be the most surprising of, of uh, all the uh, all the issues that he touched on. Uh, well, I, I was too, and that he called it out in such a clear fashion. But I think, the, for me, the one that was even more surprising was the way um, that he did the code words for what usually conservatives think of as the abortion language. You know, protecting the dignity of all life. And it was very, it was a, kind of a, a deer that the Republicans, who had been a little slow to stand up and applaud some things, they jumped to their feet and applauded, and then the Democrats were a little slow. And, um, but then he immediately went to the death penalty. And I really think these two issues are connected. Do we deal death, or are we really respecters of life? And it was in that context he was talking both armed trade and death penalty and the dignity of all of life that we need to be respectful of. Uh, let's go to the Pope uh, speaking for the global abolition of the death penalty. The golden rule also reminds us of our responsibility to protect and defend human life at every stage of its development. This conviction has, has led me, from the beginning of my ministry, to advocate, at different levels, the global abolition of the death penalty. I am, I am convinced that this way is the best. Since every life is sacred, every human person is endowed with an inalienable dignity, and society can only benefit from the rehabilitation of those convicted of crimes. That 
Is the Pope addressing, in the first ever address to Congress by a Pope, uh, the issue of the death penalty? He called for its global abolition. The significance of this, Sister Simone Campbell, as um, thousands of people sit on death row in the United States, over 3,000. One, um, Richard Glossop, uh, has an execution date in the next few days set once again. Oh, it, it was hugely important. He also, uh, just after that part, also said that I believe that the bishops were going to be greater advocates on this issue. Um, that, I think, is key, that we have be, just because he says it once doesn't mean that it's accomplished. And he's keenly aware of the fact that we need to really stand up for all people. He also mentioned that we cannot ever give up hope for any one person, and that hope and uh, the possibility of rehabilitation is always at the heart of our care for each other. So I think that his um, focus, his uh, really lifting this issue to such a prominence can help us move away from what's really a, a medieval response to um, and a fearful response to to crime. And too often, especially in the case of Mr. Glassup, that we're hearing that this is, you know, he's erroneously convicted. And uh, I think the, that sort of horror uh, alone should be enough, much less the dignity of everybody who uh, may have committed these crimes. But how do we how do, I think what he's saying is that it diminishes our dignity to kill someone else, and especially when the state does it in our name, then who are we? Who are we as a nation? And he was trying to lay that out clearly to call us to be our better selves. And, and Sister Simone, what are some of the issues that you perhaps had hoped the Pope would address uh, in, in this uh, presentation, in this address to Congress? Oh, that he, that he hadn't addressed? It was a little hard to think of something. I mean, immigration and economic justice are the two big issues that we work on in our organization, and he really clearly addressed both. I guess if there was anything that would have been— um, I'd like a little more specificity about would have been the the huge economic divide in our nation. I mean, he spoke about it generally in the global context, but that it's so keenly felt in the United States that um, and, and I've met so many people who struggle so hard at the margins. Um, I, I just would wish maybe that their stories had influenced him a little bit more to speak more specifically of the U.S. But on the whole, I mean, it's really hard to complain. That was an amazing speech. Um, very quickly, Sister Simone, before we wrap up, in 2012, the Vatican reprimanded the Leadership Conference of Women Religious, the largest group of Catholic nuns in the United States, accusing them of promoting a radical feminist themes and challenging church teachings on homosexuality and male-only priesthood. Um, your group network also came under investigation. Um, what has come of these investigations? Actually, yesterday we spoke with one woman priest who was arrested in civil disobedience yesterday in Washington, D.C., calling for women to be ordained. But what has happened in both cases? Well, in those cases, um, that, that we've all made nice, uh, Pope Francis said, end it. And so uh, the censure was ended two years early. Everybody said they learned from dialogue. Our organization actually has never heard from the Vatican, either before or after. But I'm assuming that it's wrapped up with Pope Francis, because the work that we do is totally in keeping with what Pope Francis does. But I have to say that if it hadn't been for the censure, we would have never had uh, what our program Nuns on the Bus. We would have never had our focus on poverty lifted up in our nation. And I think we really got a chance to help shape our national dialogue and refocus on the issue of those who struggle. So, while it was extremely painful, while I think it's over and we've all made nice, and Pope Francis said that he loves the nuns, um, it also was a gift that got used for some good work in our nation. And nuns May we on be the able bus to continue? are nuns on the bus. Explain that project. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, nuns on the bus are our, our campaign where we go around the country lifting up the stories of real people who struggle and shining a light on the good things that are being done, and as well as the divides. And our latest trip just wound up just before Pope Francis came, and our theme was. Bring 
bridge the divides, transform politics. We've got to do it together. <clears throat> We're going to break and then come back to this discussion. Sister Simone Campbell, thanks so much. Executive Director of Network, a Catholic social justice group, author of A Nun on the Bus, How All of Us Can Create Hope, Change and Community. 